Let's talk about stateful versus stateless architectures when you're creating an app and what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages and why you should choose one over another. So let's go and discuss with the help of an example how a stateful application would look versus the same version of that stateless application. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Okay, so let's take example of this app one which is going to be a stateful application. Let's say you're trying to make an API endpoint, which is rate limited, right? Now, what do I mean by that? This is like not an application in general itself, but just a feature which would be using state. So let's say this is your server over here. And in the server, let's say you're running Node.js, for example, you could be running pretty much any language. You want that anyone hitting the endpoint API slash login should be able to do that only five times per second maximum, right? And this is from a single IP address. So let's say this is your client and this is the server which you have, which is like a single server, single EC2 instance or what have you, and you want to implement this logic. Now in the state full way, this is the app one example, what you would probably do is inside Node.js, you would probably have a rate limit object where the key is an IP address, which could be like one, two, three, four. And the value is the amount of hits this particular route has by this IP address. And for the sake of this video, let's assume that we're just trying to restrict it to a single path so that we can just keep the count of a counter. And let's say this is like three at the moment. So every single time, whenever somebody hits on this EC2 instance, let's say in the app dot post, what you do is you also write something like rate limit of IP address plus plus something like that, right? And if you just check here, if the rate limit is more than that, then you reject the request or you just send a 403 or something. Now, the problem with this application is let's say that your app becomes very successful and now you want to scale it. Let's say you are getting tens of thousands of users now trying to log into your application. Now the problem here is when you try to scale it, let's say you have a different server now, let's say this is another server which is kind of running your same application copy. But the problem here would be if you are using something like you probably would be using a load balancer or something like this. So when you hit that load balancer, that load balancer could send the request to this server or it could send the request to this server depending on what kind of scheduling algorithm or what, what is the configuration or it could send to any random server as well which you have configured in the cluster, right? Let's assume you are trying to win the world and you have so many servers now. So this architecture fails over there where you are storing this in the memory, in the node memory itself, right? This right here is called state. So anything which is session specific, which has a side effect in a way, for example, if you run the code and your code, your application now has a state, which means that if I restart it or reload it, it would not behave in a similar way. Then you would call that application as a stateful app. And the biggest problem with stateful applications is that they are not horizontally scalable. That is once you try to scale them for within different servers, you cannot do that because the state would come and bite you back. Now, the way you usually make stateful applications stateless is you actually cheat. I mean, there is no way to truly eliminate the state from a system because then of course, how would anyone remember anything? Some, some component has to remember this object also, right? So technically making a stateful application stateless is more like saying the code layer of your stateful application as stateless, right? Because your app would always be stateful. If you have a database or if you have a caching mechanism or anything, you need state to store the data. But in this case, for example, what we can do in case of app two, because we have already the architecture with us, you have the load balancer here, and then you have multiple EC2 instances, right? So now, instead of storing this object inside the node memory, instead of doing that, what you do is you use maybe something like Redis instance, which is like a shared Redis instance by all these EC2 instances. Now you might say that, hey, that you know, how does this fix the problem? But it in fact fixes the problem in a way because you have moved your problem, your state to something which is built to handle a lot of state, right? Node.js is not built to handle a lot of state in a way because you want Node to do your computation and send the results back and do a ton of other work, whether that's async IO or network request and this and that. But Redis over here can act as a single source of truth for your state, right? So you 
take your state object over here and you convert that into redis key value for example your key could be one two three four in this case and the value could be three and every single time you hit here instead of saying something like this what you say is something like await redis.set ip you know increment redis dot whatever i mean i don't remember the command exactly but you can increment the key value directly inside redis in an atomic operation so that's fine and like i said the ad advantage with this is you can pretty much have unlimited compute at your disposal but all of them have to like you know just go to the redis instance so in a way i would say that this solution in fact is slower right this solution is in fact slower than this one because in this case node is reading directly from the ram and in fact this is like the process memory itself so this would obviously be much faster compared to this redis which is probably running over a network right you're reading this over tcp so tcp network communication is definitely slower than ram but and a big huge case where you would need to use this is because it makes horizontal scaling so much easy right there are ways where you can kind of scale this architecture horizontally as well stateful architecture but for that what you need to do is you need to somehow route individual clients request always to the same server right and the way to do that is that maybe the first time this load balancer gets a new request it sends it to a server the server over here actually sends a special cookie let's say the address for this server is e1 right so it sets a cookie like e1 and this client also gets that e1 cookie and on every single request to that load balancer this load balancer can read that cookie and then direct the request properly but again this architecture implementing that is is obviously more difficult compared to this one but yeah i mean it wouldn't be that much slower i should not really like slower i should actually write faster over here because this is in all practical cases always an acceptable delay or always an acceptable amount of time so yep that's pretty much it about differences between a stateful and a stateless application hopefully you got to know something new something interesting today if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching